Welcome to Redbeard and the Den of Tools. Howdy ho there, I'm Red. Welcome back to the Den of Tools. And today we're talking trucks again. Yeah, we recently reported that the Ford had took a big hit and had to stop production when their supplier's uh, plant burned to the ground. Apparently somebody wanted to learn what would happen when you took a torch to magnesium. Ooh, bad times. But the good news is that a week early, Ford started up production today on those lines that had been stopped. So everyone's going to be getting back to work. Hopefully things will be revving back up and they'll get back on track. Although still, it's going to affect Ford's bottom line at the end of the year. $1.6 billion in projected lost sales so far. Also quickly, I want to address those kind of fanboys. I don't care whether you're Ford, GM, Chrysler, Dodge, whatever. If you can't take the news, you need to go back to your hole. We've had so many nasty comments down there that I've had to delete. It's ridiculous. Some people need to grow up, stop getting so damn butt hurt. This isn't your freaking baseball team here that someone's talking about. This is business. This is real stuff. It's the second most expensive thing that most people will buy besides a house. It's not a football team. Ford doesn't care that you're a fanboy. Chevy doesn't care that you're a fanboy. They're not going to come over for dinner on Friday night. Pull up your britches. Sorry you got bad news about your favorite truck, but don't have a cow about it. All right, moving on. That said, we're talking about the pickup wars, but it's not the war you're thinking of. Today's battlefield revolves more around miles per gallon and emissions. They got the government regulating how many you know units of whatever that each truck can put out. Consumers are worried about how much it's going to cost them at the gas tank as gas prices go up and down. And that's a real concern for your average American. Ford was the one to strike first in this when they came out with their line of EcoBoost engines. Originally touted as a economy choice for the few people who don't want to have a V8 and are more worried about gas mileage, it quickly became the best-selling engine in their line, far surpassing all the V8s and everything else that they offered. Ram went a different route. They went with an 8-speed automatic transmission. But today we got news that Chevy is coming out with an inline 4-cylinder, 2.7-liter turbocharged engine to put in its full-size truck lineup. Wow. That, I mean, people scoffed when Ford put a 6-cylinder in a full-size pickup truck, but Ford was able to prove that it could hang with the big boys with that. And here we've got Chevy putting in a 4-cylinder. Now, granted, the smaller of the Econoline is about the same size as this inline four-cylinder. So this is no tiny little four-cylinder, but when you compare it to the size, but when you compare it to the size of a full-size pickup truck, one has to wonder, will the power really be there? Will the consumers notice, and will they decide to go with this route? Well, when we look at the numbers and we see that over half of all pickup trucks sold in the United States are actually four-door trucks, it's safe to say that this is becoming the new family truckster. And you know, for our family, that's certainly true. Granted, the half-ton trucks don't have the heft and the might of your bigger trucks, the 250s and 2500s and bigger. But for your average homeowner, it's good enough. You could throw sheets of plywood, some gravel in the back, haul around a couple bikes, you know, cycles or whatnot, go camping and do everything you want to do in it. And you don't need to always step up to those bigger trucks. Not everyone's pulling a fifth wheel back there. And, as, and Americans have quickly adopted this as their new favorite vehicle, especially when you look at car sales. One, two, and three is F-150, Silverado, and Ram 1500. It's hard to argue with those kind of facts. That said, while many of you, in fact, I'm sure most of you will be howling at the moon saying there's no way I would ever buy a four-cylinder for my truck, you need to understand you might not be the average bear. Gas prices are, are ticking their way north, and when it hits $4 a gallon, they're going to be looking for alternatives. They don't want to give up the big truck. They still want to be able to drive around in style, haul uh, you know a little bit of lumber or whatnot when they need to. And this turbocharged four-cylinder, by all accounts, will be able to do that. It may not have the same rumble in your belly that you get from those eight-cylinders. I know my Hemi does. <laughs> But still, it will probably get the job done. It's amazing what some of these auto manufacturers have been able to pull out of these four and six cylinder engines. Any of you old enough to remember the Grand National and what it did to the auto scene when it came out? So why is Chevy making this move now? Well, it's pretty plain to see when you look at the numbers. Both Ram and Chevrolet are playing catch up in the economy wars. 
For those of you who don't know this site, fueleconomy.gov is an excellent website for comparing different vehicles' fuel economy and getting some real-world numbers, not just what the manufacturers want to push on you. Well, with the U.S. pulling out of the Iran deal, $4 a gallon prices might not be far behind. I know in California, they're not that far off. In fact, when I was just over there, I saw them just shy of $4 in some of the out-of-the-way stations. But with consumers being consumers, they don't want to give up on their trucks, and they're going to go wherever the best miles per gallons take them. And GM doesn't want to lose them. I <laughs> can't say I blame them. The real question here is, will the V8 survive another gas crisis? The Ford Econoboost has proven to be more successful than the V8 in their full-size trucks. And there's nothing to say that the same won't be true over at Chevy. This may sound the death knell for V8s in half-ton trucks. Only time will tell, so put your comments below how you think things are going to turn out. Again, Let's keep everything above the belt and act like adults if at all possible. I will not hesitate to boot anyone acting like some childish teenage fanboy. And if you like what you see here at the Den of Tools, maybe consider being a member over on Patreon. You could be a Black Bear member for only a dollar a month. That's $12 a year. That's like, what, a Starbucks cup of coffee these days? I don't know. I don't, I don't drink that stuff. And also, you can pick up a copy of my book, The Home Distiller's Workbook, Your Guide to Making Moonshine Whiskey, Vodka, Rum, and so much more. Or, remember, Father's Day's coming around. Maybe it's a good gift for Dad or get him some De Bear merch. But always remember, the easiest way to support the channel is free. Chomp that like button. Spread the word with a share and subscribe and ring the bell. And just a quick note to you regulars, this is going to be the Bear's new uh, uniform for everything automotive. You'll see the Bear here in his, his mechanic shirt from Red's Garage. That'll make it easier for you at a glance to tell that, hey, this is going to be automotive news or talk or such. And if you don't want it, you know, skip on the video and maybe wait for the next tool video or the next rant video, whatever you like. Hopefully it'll make it easier for everyone to find the content that they want. I hope you all enjoy it. Take care, and as always, shine on.